Merry Christmas. It is always an interesting perspective when we have the daily ma the mass of the day for Christmas. Taking note that apart from the evening mass or the vigil that is uh, December 24 or Christmas Eve, there is also a midnight mass. And there is even a dawn mass. And after the dawn mass, there is the mass for the day. And the mass for the day proper takes on the perspective of the prologue of the Gospel of St. John. That when we start reading this particular Gospel according to St. John, we are brought back as far as the very first book of the Bible as well. Because when it says, in the beginning, we are always reminded of Genesis. That does begin as well with, in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth. And so this is a very beautiful perspective when we enter into the season of Christmas. Because Christmas is bringing us to the very beginnings of time and to the very beginnings of everything, of who and what we are. And then it always reaches into a climax when it comes to the verse, and the word became flesh. And according to our Angelus, to the, responsor, to the responsory in the Angelus, unsay atong tubag ana, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. He made his dwelling among us. It may sound as simple as that, or as natural or normal or mura nagali nag repetitious naman kaayo we don't even see the meaning of it you know i always tell my students even after until now i do not they do not follow me i always say to them whenever we pray the angelos at that last responsory when we say and the word was made flesh or became flesh is a very important thing to always acknowledge it and i always tell them well, this is for me, this, this is as far as I'm concerned, that you have to put your right hand over your left shoulder, and then you make a bow. Because that is one acknowledgement of how the Word of God, how the divinity of the Godhead came down within, among us. And that is a very beautiful description and expression and manifestation of how we value Christmas, how we value the Incarnation, the mystery of the Incarnation. And it is always with hearts full of gratitude that we make a, a bow. In fact, when we will be reciting after this, we will be reciting the, uh, the Nicene Creed, okay, our, our act of faith. When we come to the portion of He became man, we have to kneel down, in fact. No? So, ako ano lang daan nang i-announce kay pag-abot nato diha nga section sa credo, we make a solemn uh, manifestation of respect. So, katong makaluhod, pangluhod mo. Ayaw, ayaw ko niyo ang tarao kahit di mo makaluhod. <laughs> Mabududo ko rako with a very solemn, deep bow to acknowledge that the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. Another point that we have to take into perspective is, it is not just as simply as, and the Word became flesh and dwelt or made His dwelling among us. Because there is a very beautiful essence, which is not so much translated, not so much known as we read scriptures. Because the original Greek of the text, and He made His dwelling among us, is actually, and He pitched His tent among us. No? Og ang pulong na himong tao, og iyang gi, gitukod ang iyang tulda, uban ka nato. Now what is the essence of this beautiful imagery of pitching one's tent? It reminds us of God's people journeying from the wilderness towards the promised land. And in fact, even before that, because our ancestors in the faith, Abraham and his ancestors and his forefathers were actually called nomads. Kung saan may nomads? Oh, wala sila'y kaugalingong settlement. Because they were shepherds. 
by profession or ang ilahang trabaho sa kinabuhi. They do not plant because they do not own tracts of land. That's why they go from one place to another where there is good grazing ground. That's why their lives, in as much as our faith life, is always taken into the context of a journey. And this is what is happening in this very verse, that the Son of God, the Word, became flesh. He pitched His tent among us. Kung di san asa tamo adto, kuyog sad siya. No, uban sad siya kanato. And that's the reason why He is known as the Emmanuel, the God with us. And He comes with us, among us, in our journey of faith. And this is a very beautiful perspective as well in the so-called the synodality of the church. Because the church as a synod, we are constantly in journey. Diha sa ito ang pagpanaw in our journey, we feel so many beautiful things. We receive so many gifts. We also share the same problems. We also share so many predicaments in life. And that is what the life of the church is. It is not something that pahayahay lang ta, no? Dili na siya yun nga, muadto lang ta o simbahan kung ganahan ta, no? We have to be engaged in so many things that are happening in our lives. And this is one recognition that even or despite the so many things that we have in life, good or bad, pleasant or unpleasant, inspiring or non or discouraging, God is always with us. That's why he made his tent, he pitched his tent among us. Finally, there is another English translation that is used in this verse, and he made his dwelling among us, and he pitched his tent among us. And the word used is tabernacle. So, and the word became flesh, and he tabernacled among us. And what is a tabernacle? Unsa may tabernacolo? The tabernacolo is the where the blessed sacrament is. That's why today and all the rest of our living years and days, we are always reminded that this God who is with us has a very special place, not only in the church, not only in the chapels, but also deep within our hearts. But then it is always a good thing to make a visit to him who always stays with us in the tabernacle. Do you visit the Blessed Sacrament? Or at least man lang, make very little time or a short time to make a bow to thank him. You know, I always do that. Before I leave the chapel after the Mass, I spend Siguro mga 30 seconds, but at least I would always look at the, 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 the exposed host because that is his presence among us. In the tabernacle, in the blessed sacrament, in the, in, the, in the chapel where you do the vigils. And that is one way of recognizing his presence among us. And once we are in his presence and we leave him as he stays there forever, we also bring with us his presence to our brothers and sisters. And that is the very essence of Christian faith, Christian celebration, and what Christianity is all about. We are Christians. We bring Christ to our brothers and sisters and to the whole world, wherever we go and wherever we are. Amen.